I, you know, from the first day of shooting on Daredevil until the last day of shooting on, uh, on Defenders, I, I've watched uh, everyone from the writers to the cast to the crews uh, to everyone that works at Marvel Television, you know, put together something which, uh, you know, has been extraordinary, uh, you know, to do it. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and today I'm going to talk about the recent news about Jeff Loeb leaving as Marvel's head of television. This is definitely not one of the dominoes I thought would fall when Kevin Feige took over as chief creative officer of all of Marvel properties. First, I'm going to read an article from Superhero Hype reporting on Loeb's exit from Marvel television, and then I'm going to talk to my good friend Doc from the Comics Aficionados about Jeff Loeb's exit and all the implications. First, let's read the article from Superhero Hype. Back in 2010, Jeff Loeb was named Marvel's head of TV and given the mandate to bring the MCU to television. However, Loeb's long stint with the company appears to be at an end. Via The Hollywood Reporter and Variety, Loeb is reportedly making his exit from Marvel TV. Loeb may have been planning his exit even before Marvel Studios' Kevin Feige was promoted to chief creative officer. Under the terms of the reorganization, Loeb would have reported directly to Feige. Instead, Loeb will likely seek a new position at a different studio. Loeb's first major foray into Marvel TV was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in 2013. Loeb and Marvel were initially able to use a few familiar faces from the MCU movies in the show. However, Feige's well-publicized clashes with Marvel CEO Ike Perlmutter largely kept the movies and TV shows from having much interaction. Feige also began producing his own Marvel television series for Disney+, which further diminished Loeb's reach. Perhaps Loeb's biggest success was the colossal deal between Marvel and Netflix that spawned Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Defenders, and The Punisher. Despite breaking out on Netflix, the streaming service began canceling its Marvel shows after Disney revealed plans to launch Disney+. With that, let's talk to my good friend Doc from the Comics Aficionados. With me today is Comic Aficionado Doc. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. Awesome. So we got the news that the second domino has fallen after Kevin Feige has been named the chief creative uh, officer over all of Marvel for studios, TV, and uh, comic books. You know, the first one was the demotion of Joe Casada from the uh, the EI or the CC. Was he the EIC? No, no, he well, was the he, CCO. Well, he was the EIC way back in the day, but mm. whenever he he got a promotion uh, to CCO, and then. Yeah. That's when Axel took over because Axel was his right hand man whenever he was EIC. Yeah. Okay. So the first domino was Joe Casada being removed as the CCO of Marvel Comics, and he's now a executive vice president. And uh, Kevin Feige is now the CCO. And now we have Jeff Loeb, who's been in charge of Marvel Television and Animation for a decade now, right? Uh, probably pretty close, if not a little longer. Yeah, so he's you know he's uh, navigated Marvel through all their live action from the beginnings of you know the ABC show uh, show Shield, uh, you know all the Netflix brands that were so popular and really uh, brought Marvel Television to the forefront of, of public visibility and and even you know some of the the low points like in Humans, but you know so Jeff Loeb has, has been very influential at Marvel Comics or not at Marvel Comics but Marvel as a studio overall, just in their television project. Are you surprised this happened so soon? Um, I am, but at the same time, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised that it happened. I expected it to go completely different. Um, but at the same time, I can absolutely see why he'd leave. Well, expand. Why would he leave? Well... You know, it's one thing, like he and him, he and Kevin Feige had a pretty good working relationship when, when they were both working for Ike, back in the, you know, before the creative committee got shut down, um, and before Feige got his, you know, earned his quote unquote freedom from Ike by petitioning the Disney board to have autonomy. And, and, you know, he, so Loeb and Feige worked pretty well when they were both working under Ike, and they were essentially equivalents. Uh, one just handled TV and one handled film. But I guess, you know, working for your buddy is, well, assuming they're you know, actually friends, 
but working for somebody, working for somebody is wholly different than working with somebody. And I'm guessing he just did not like the fact that he was now, he felt even lower. He felt like, he probably felt like it was a, it was a demotion for him too. So he's just like, you know what? No, I'm out. So well, uh, according, according to the articles I read, he, you know, this uh, exit has actually been in the works for a little while. Does that make you think that maybe this uh, Marvel knew about these uh, Marvel television, Marvel comics, probably knew about some of these changes with Feige, or at least the television side did beforehand? I'm betting the television side did. I'm not, I don't think the comic side knew. Because mm-hmm. from what I've, what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've, you know, been told, um, the creative, at least the comic side, had, they found out about it in the trade press the same way that everybody else did. Mm-hmm. And my understanding is maybe even Joe found out about it the same way. He probably found out that he was, you know, that Feige was going to be a bigger part. But I don't think he thought he was getting the motion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm betting the television side had a li- at least a little bit of a heads up, because you know, the, the TV doesn't really run on a cycle, you know, the way that the way the comics do. Um, <clears throat> you can kind of put stuff in motion. You know, you're kind of constantly putting, you know, having balls in the air trying to juggle everything with television, especially when you're not on the same networks or the same mm-hmm. timetables for each of your productions, you know, animation's probably a lot longer. Um, you know, they have, uh, you know, the, the Hulu stuff is probably on one timetable. The ABC stuff is on another table. The, the free form stuff is on a different table. And especially when they didn't continue the, uh, Netflix contract, I think that's whenever uh, <clears throat> whenever Loeb probably got a pretty good idea, was able to read the tea leaves, I guess you could say, and figure out what was coming down the line. So it's interesting that you bring up Netflix. You know, that's probably, you know, in my opinion, I think in the opinion of a lot of, of customers and fans, that that was probably the high point of what Jeff Loeb brought to the table as far as television was especially the Daredevil series, and then um, I think uh, Punisher was 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 pretty well thought of. I I, I didn't. I think Jessica Jones might have been uh, the beginning of the end as far as quality there. But I'm shocked that they would uh, move on from him while they're still planning this Disney Plus expansion with all the new Marvel content that's going to be on there. That they aren't movies; these are television shows. These are ser- serial properties. They're not. Uh, you know, single contained stories. So you would think that you would want someone who's had a, a, a large amount of success in producing and pitching and executing uh, television projects like Jeff Loeb uh, to move on from him at this point uh, seems odd. Yeah, it kind of does. But I believe Feige does have a history or at least experience with television. I think he can. Absolutely. He's produced television in the past, but you know, he's primarily been doing movies for 10 years yeah and but so having somebody that is kind of on that he's in that that mindset of doing television seems like it would be a really beneficial thing um and i don't see them having somebody else you know dc when jeff left kind of they they kind of floated for a little while not really sure of who was going to run their their television side until they found Greg Berlanti. And then Berlanti pretty much has run almost all of their TV side in the intervening years. Um, but I don't know if, if Marvel really has somebody else. You know, I guess maybe they, they, they were trying to do it with... Uh, the the you know with Whedon mm-hmm. as well, but you know Joss is gone now, uh, and I think his brother is too. <clears throat> um, then I think you know Tara Butters and the the the, the other chick, the, the two that did uh, 
the Agent Carter show. Yeah. They didn't really stick around. They're doing network television now. And, um, you know, they had uh, Christos Gage and his wife that were, and I'm really blanking on her name, and I feel bad about that because she's probably a more accomplished television person than, than, than Christos is. But they were, you know, they came out of Law and Order SVU, and they were involved on, they were basically the staff writers for the first season of Daredevil, which is still, in my opinion, the best season of Daredevil. And it was the Absolutely. best season of all of the Marvel shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you already had these people with television experiences, but you didn't use them. Her name and, is uh, Ruth Fletcher Gage. Okay, yeah. And uh, um, so you, you, you had these people in the organization with a lot of television experience, but you, you, you didn't really do anything with them. Um, and then they've all kind of left. I don't know who's left behind Jeff Loeb. Well, one of the interesting things is when um, when Dis- Disney recently acquired all the uh, uh, Fox you know properties. One of the reasons was is they they knew they were going to make more shows for Disney Plus, and they wanted more production capability. So they wanted the people from Fox, uh, you know, that had done FX and in the Fox proper stuff. So maybe uh, someone's going to slide over from there. That is uh, is one of their producers that's and, been and- in charge of uh, large scale operations. That is probably what's going to make the most sense. Uh, mm-hmm. I wasn't really thinking about it on that level, but yeah, yeah, that that's probably going to be their best bet because I don't know. I mean, and they can always you know tap some of the other like Disney people that they already had that weren't you know in the Marvel side, but the the more Disney television type people. Yeah, because they don't need a creative director. They have one in Kevin Feige. He's obviously. The Disney Plus stuff is sinking right in with the MCU stuff. They're they're going to be one and the same, at least as the universe goes, just being uh, presented differently in a serialized product. So really, yeah. you just need uh, someone that knows how to run production, yeah, and and, and knows you know who to hire, you know where and where to film and things of that nature. Yeah, that and that's that's probably going to be their best call. Um, mm-hmm. Either somebody from the Disney TV side or somebody from the Fox. Or, or the FX side, probably, more likely, rather than, um, like, the Fox Network side. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, they, they that's, uh, whew, you got, I mean, I hope that they have somebody in mind. They had to have had somebody in mind, and that's probably the reason why it's taken this long. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, Jeff might have already been gone. So one last question. I know when, when the announcement was made that, that Jeff Lowe would no longer uh, report to Ike Perlmutter, he was going to start reporting directly to Kevin Feige as the creative director. There was a lot of uh, anticipation. You know, People were excited that maybe we're going to see Charlie Cox Daredevil you know, in the MCU or at least on the Disney Plus shows showing up. You know, Everyone really loved that version of Daredevil. Charlie Cox really uh, personified the character and really brought him to life. Do you think those ideas or those uh, hopes and dreams are all but quashed with this uh, with this announcement? I I would believe so. Yeah, um, I think with Jeff leaving, leaving, they're going to likely kind of just wipe the slate clean when it comes to the television side. Uh, you know what came before, and kind of start fresh because they're going to do the same thing with. With X Men on the film side, even though they've acquired that, they're gonna mm-hmm. wipe they they're gonna wipe the slate clean and start fresh. Um, I mean, hell, that's the reason why you know Dark Phoenix got delayed so long because they were obvious. They obviously changed that movie significantly to remove the scrolls. Yeah, as well so as clean. New Mutants. Yeah, and and New Mutants is pretty much dead in the water. I um, think that'll be released on Disney Plus actually as just a movie. That's that's basically once once it got to the second delay, I pretty much said this movie is going to end up destined for Disney Plus as an exclusive mm-hmm. uh, to try to get people to sign up uh, because it's already existing per, you know product. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I think I think that this is their chance to wipe everything clean. They're just going to say 
screw it. We're, we're, you know, everything that happened on Netflix, I mean, uh, at least the rest of because it'd be weird, you know, Mike Coulter's busy. He, he can't come back to do Luke Cage because he's got that show Evil that's on ABC or CBS or NBC. I don't know, one of the networks. Um, you know, he's got a he's got a new hour long drama, so he's gone as as Luke Cage going forward. Um, you know, uh, Finn or Finn Jones. Finn Jones, yeah, he's probably. I mean, he wasn't exactly a great uh, Iron Fist to begin with, but mm-hmm. I, I mean, he's probably still available because I don't think he's in anything right now. But, um, and, uh, what's her name that played Jessica Jones also still probably available. I don't think she's really doing anything, but she always finds work. Mm -hmm. So she, she won't be unemployed for very long. Um, so if they're going to keep any of the Netflix stuff, you know, you're only going to be able to keep one of the four characters. Or, or one that was good and one that was meh out of the four. Because mm-hmm. the other the other two are pretty much busy. Uh, obviously, you could get uh, the guy from the, you know, John Barenthal to come back, probably, to do Punisher. But even that wasn't really super well received, at least the Punisher show itself. So I think, yeah, they're going to... They're going to wipe the slate clean. Plus the fact that you're, they're not going to want to have any sort of connection with a library of content that they don't have access to. You know, that's mm-hmm. the other thing. Disney doesn't have, you know, they're not going to be able to get those, those Netflix shows available on, uh, on, on Disney Plus. So why continue? I mean, you're either going to reboot the character with the same actor and pretend like the, the previous three seasons and miniseries never happened, or you're going to say, hey, go to our competitor to watch the free th- first three seasons of this. No, they're, they're just going to wipe the slate clean. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me today and talking about Jeff Loeb moving on from Marvel television as uh, Marvel changes uh, the the creative direction and structure following Kevin Feige's ascension. Thanks, Doc, and I'll talk to you later. All right, brother. I'll talk to you later. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.